The 16th of June 1976 is a day that changed the course of South African history. Thousands of Soweto pupils took to the streets to protest against poor education imposed on them by the apartheid government. 42 years later, young people continue their fight and there's still many hurdles facing the youth. But we hardly hear what their leaders are doing to change the fortunes of millions of young South Africans. While the ANC's Youth League Secretary, Njabulo Nzuza, is in studio to answer that very question and reflect on 42 years since the 16th of June 1976. My leader, good morning to you and thank you so much for joining us. Good morning and good morning to the viewers at home. Yeah, and, and yours, I mean, I suppose in the political space, there's an expectation that you will make everybody happy and deliver on their, their demands and expectations that generally the Youth League has been seen to have failed young people in the country. Your response? Well, let me start by saying that currently we are hardly at work to make sure that we lobby government to cancel experience as a requirement for entry-level positions. And for us, victory is certain and victory is closer. Uh, we are seeing a lot of government uh, departments and officials that we've been engaging with uh, having a positive response towards that. And when we do such work, we do not do it for publicity or to be recognized. We do it to make a meaningful change in the lives of young people in this country. And when that happens, hopefully someone will say, hey, the actual, actually the ANC Youth League did do its job. Mm. But, I mean, that's just one example that you've cited. But there's just a general sense mm. that there is... Um, self-preservation or interest in terms of positions that those mm. that are uh, in the echelons of power are gatekeepers and not enabling young people to explore their, their, their opportunities and, and potential. Well, I can say that, for instance, we are not uh, clinging into any form of power. We are having our National Congress. It's sitting from the 6th to the 11th of September. We had a term of three years. The term of three years have come to an end. It's time for a younger generation to take over. Part of the views that we held is that uh, even a younger generation, not just those who are in the 30s or in the 20s, even those below the age of 20, of 20 should now take leadership of the ANC Youth League. And that for us is part of opening up new ideas to be breathed into the ANC Youth League, opening up a chance for a younger generation of leaders to come through. Mm -hmm. We are not about, uh, you know, uh, self-preservation, I would say. It is unfortunate that some of our achievements we have not uh, actually uh, covered them very well in terms of the media space and how we have informed people. If I remember sometime uh, last year when we hosted our anti-racism uh, anti in sports campaign uh, at the star offices, now it's bearing fruit. No one is going back to actually say the ANC Youth League actually matched to see black players on the Springbok team. Uh, when you talk about the issue of APSA and how we handled that one, where we mobilized thousands of young people to actually march against what APSA was doing, which was very wrong. You know, so we have been there, we have been raising awareness. Probably it has been the capturing of the issues. But we'll know that, uh, you know, when we came into office, it was immediately an issue of a building up to a 2017 elective conference. And we were already viewed in a certain way whether we were raising genuine issues or not. You know, we just say, oh, these ones, they actually are pursuing this agenda. Yeah. Can you say without any contradiction that there is a common vision when it comes to dealing with youth unemployment where young people are still living in squalor, mm. uh, the sense of hopelessness within the ANC Youth League? Or are you also... Uh, plagued and marred by the factionalism that is in, in the in the mother Look, body. Look, we we're very clear. We have dedicated Youth Month uh, to youth unemployment. We are going to be having a rally which will be addressed by the president on the 23rd. Clear message: jobs for youth. That's all that we want. You have about 3.3 million young people who are sitting, who are not in education, who are not uh, in looking for employment but staying shallow in, 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 in townships. That's a point of crisis. And as an ANC Youth League, we are saying, in order to make sure that we get young people employed, one, let's deal and confront the issue of foreign nationals who are having jobs in South Africa, whilst our South African youth does not have jobs. That is something that we need to confront and deal with, that Uber drivers, 
in the hospitality industry, in the construction industry, the private sector is having more appetite to, op or to, to employ foreign nationals because they abuse them in terms of salary scales and they don't want to employ South Africans. We must deal with that. And we are coherent as the ANC Youth League that we must deal with that issue. Yeah, but I mean the, the issue of, let's say, <coughs> labor brokers, for example, which has been a perennial concern among workers, saying that they exactly uh, would either allegedly um, victimize or rather underpay workers or even threaten their livelihood in negotiation with the employment. That issue is still there. Mm. So how are we going to then, especially legal, um, what you would call foreign nationals that are working in the country, there are no barriers as to how or where people can work yes. and live. So exactly. how are you going that to That is why as the ANC Youth League was saying the Department of Labor must introduce quotas that a company cannot employ a certain percentage of more than 20% of foreign nationals in its own company so that we prioritize people from within the country and we must have the Department of Labor enforcing and visiting those private firms because the issue of labor brokers has gone worse. All government contracts and construction contracts are being carried by private companies. Those private companies then also subcontract other companies. And at the end of the day, you find that the people who actually get jobs there are not actually properly vetted if they even have a work permit to actually work. You find that a person is building a government building, but that person does not have a permit to actually do work. And that is why we are saying the Department of Labor must start rating sites of employment to check that the people people who are actually working there do have work permits. Otherwise, we'll be having a situation where the leaky jobs that we have in the country are actually not working for the South African youth. Yeah, but that also brings me to the <coughs> conflict of interest, if you will, with certain ministers or uh, the political elite that have business interests that are not only shareholders, but uh, who would have vested interest in, in these multinationals. How, how are they then going to disrupt their own revenue? in order to fulfill a national uh, imperative? Frankly enough, we don't care about business owners and uh, what they actually do. If something is wrong, it is wrong, irregardless of who they are. If they continue to prioritize foreign nationals in terms of employment and compromise our own South African youth, we have a problem with them. And the law must be established and the law must be enforced. Whoever they are, we really don't care. Mm. Okay, let's talk about, uh, you were saying this is, you mark this year as uh, the year for jobs for youth. The intergenerational mix, where in government at least there is a ANC uh, dominant, you know, uh, ANC brand government. So why is it that we don't see that intergenerational mix reflecting at least at government level when it comes to young people's uh, representation? Well, that's what we have been having a problem with and uh, we still raise it. Uh, if you remember when we went to the 2016 local government elections, for the first time in the history of the ANC, a quota was introduced for young people. And that is why sometimes I have a problem with people who say the ANC, you click, what, what has it been doing? For the first time in the history of the ANC, a quota of 20% was introduced for young people to actually lead in local government. Right now, if you are looking in terms of the next cycle, which is national government processes, 35% is now expected to be young people. So we've moved from zero to 20% to now 35%. It is part of the guidelines. It is the work that the ANC Youth League has been doing. But what we shouldn't be concerned only about the issue of government and government positions. This must translate into private sector employment, where there must be quotas of young people that are introduced to be employed by private sector, which is a minimum of 40%. If we come to an establishment, BHP billeting, want to make sure that BHP billeting actually adheres to the quota of 40% of employment of young people, not only at a low level, but even at managerial position. Because out there you have a lot of qualified young people who are actually just made to be interns and recycled as interns all the time, and they do not get meaningful jobs. That is the program of the ANC Youth League. We have had progress, as I've indicated, from 0 to 20, now at 35%. We are now targeting the private sector. Mm. But also the fact that these quotas, as you refer to them, will ultimately be seen as a compliance um, imperative in the sense that the companies would get better deals or they, they'd have a, a higher BE scorecard, that it's not seen as advancing a society as it were. 
Yes, look, we have welcomed uh, the YES initiative, which I think is what you are referring to, uh, which also advances that those companies which employ young people actually uh, get some PE favors and some high PE scoring. But we don't believe that in its entirety the YES initiative will solve the problems of unemployment in this country, and especially when we are dealing with young people, because they will now want to always recycle young people and just give them internship jobs and just it, and it ends there. But when you introduce a quota to say that at managerial level, we expect this number of young people to be there. At, at, at a middle level, we expect this number. At board level, we expect this number. Because it's not as if young people are not qualified. They are qualified, they are smart, they have ideas, they can take this country forward. It is so unfortunate that in South Africa, we do not seem to be giving space to young people and we always question them. Where are young people? Where are young people? Whereas in our society, the old continues to suppress the new and does not give it an opportunity to rise. We earlier spoke to Jake Willis. He's with uh, Lula Way. They are a job development uh, engine and a, a portal. And his view and research is that young people, and primarily black young people, that have basic skills are also very particular into the type of jobs that they want to, to do, the ones you refer to um, that are occupied by foreign nationals. Because there's an expectation that you want to be have a certain lifestyle, you want to get paid so much, you want these working conditions. How problematic is that? Well, it's problematic because the private sector now has an option or appetite of employing foreign nationals. There is a minimum wage, there are certain expectations, and as South Africans, we understand the law. And as young people, we understand our value and we understand our worth and what we contribute to the company. So it shouldn't be seen as a negative thing when we're saying that we know our value and what we are worth and we know what we are supposed to be paid. That's what is supposed to happen. Not that when we raise our issues and say this is what we are worth, this is what we can contribute, and immediately private sector companies go around and saying, hey, can't we look for foreign nationals who will be willing, who will be willing to take a, lo a, lower, a, lo a, lo a lower salary? That is absolutely wrong. But that means then that the young people in the main will remain in the periphery. They're not to be, you know, gaining any further skills. They're not having an income because of exactly that expectation of wanting you know, as you're saying, they know their value and therefore won't settle for minimum wage. You, we, we can't allow a situation where young people are abused and given uh, at where they are supposed to work at a certain level and they are paid less just because the system allows for them to employ foreign national. That is why we are saying there must be an introdu introduction of quotas for employment of foreign nationals. All right, what's the program then for tomorrow, June 16? June 16 will be part of government programs. What we have done is that we have given the first half of the month for government programs. NYDA have launched the youth month. But as from tomorrow, we are now taking over as the ANC Youth League. In the evening, we are having a candle lightning in Hector Peterson in Soweto. On the 23rd, we are going to be having a Jobs for Youth rally. It is going to be hosted in Pumalanga. After that, we are then going to come back in Gauteng and have a Jobs for Youth summit dealing with solutions on how do we deal with the issue of youth unemployment and ultimately we are going to be having an engagement with rural youth in the northwest to deal with issues that are affecting rural youth around employment. Mm. And, and about entrepreneurship because to just expect government to create employment in itself is not uh, sustainable or the private sector that young people also have a, a lot of uh, interventions uh, whether it's learnerships or whether it is startups, has there been as many su mm. success stories as you would have liked to see? Yes, if you go to, to, to the only structure that seems to have appetite of finding young people, which is the NYTA, you get a lot of success stories. But that is heavily underfunded, with just above 400 million to actually fund quite a number of young people, so it is not enough. And that is why it's the ANC Youth League Part of our offensive towards APSA and towards the banks in South Africa was that we must have a state bank, a bank that is going to invest in the ideas of young people in this country and not have a situation where a young person who just came out of university goes to a bank and says, hey, I want to have funding on this great idea. And then ultimately they are told, bring collateral bring your own contribution, and all these impediments. What we have seen is that what are called 
DFIs, development finance institutions. They are not assisting as well because they are acting in the same way as banks. And that is why we lobby it and successfully lobby it for the establishment of a state bank that will be able to invest in the future of our young people. Because entrepreneurship is the future. You can't say that uh, young people must be employed and you don't grow uh, firms where they are supposed to be uh, employed. And the, the, the only way to grow firms and manufacturing plants in South Africa is through entrepreneurship initiatives. The only thing that we miss as young people is that our country must invest in young people financially. And your criteria to be considered for a, a financial aid or whatever investment has to deal with your whether your credit record is impaired or whether it's impeccable. And that is also part of the problem where some young people might be in debt or even under debt review. And even when you go in business, that becomes an impediment as well. That is the very system steam that is designed to oppress our people. By the time you hit university to at first year, through it, it's already offering you an account. If you are a young person, you don't have much of ability to manage that particular credit, you default. Three years later, you come with a very clear, sound business plan that will be able to turn over millions. But what do they do? They say, because of that mistake you made there, you must be punished. The mistake of 500 rand, which is today will then delay growth. And that is why we are saying, have a state-owned bank that is going to invest on young people on the basis of the soundness of their business proposals. Timelines, though. I mean, it's 2019 elections next year. And uh, you'd probably want to have uh, the youth, the mass, supporting your organization. And yet they'd say that if there's high levels of frustration, service delivery protests, uh, lack of opportunities, or access to um, aid or whatever it is that they're looking for. Your, your view is, and even uh, higher education. Do you think you're going into the elections confident? Yes, we are going to the elections confident as the ANC. The ANC has traveled quite a long journey in delivering in the lives of our people. The lives that we live today and the opportunities that we have today as young people are not the opportunities that the generation before us had. And that is very clear. Yes, there are challenges, mainly unemployment that we need to deal with. And we are in constant contact with the ANC and we've been lobbying them. You know, sometimes uh, people, they will expect you to so, to say, because this is what you want from government, you must therefore publicly insult leaders of the ANC, and then you are declared as someone who is very revolutionary. What we are working at as the current leadership of the ANC is results. And we have been very clear that the issue of free education, yes, it's been implemented in the current year, but now we need to talk about access to education. How do we grow institutions of higher learning so that more people can be taken through the system? The 3.3 million, if we're saying they must come in for free, are we going to be able to house them? Obviously not. How do we grow capacity? That is our next struggle now, which means we have moved a notch up. We're coming from the times of NSFAS. We're now in the times of free education. We're now moving to the era of access to education. All right, we're going to leave it there, Mr. Nzuza. Thank you, as always. That's ANC Youth League Secretary Njabolo Nzuza talking about their program of action for the 16th of June in commemoration of the 1976 uprisings, 42 years later, and uh, looking at the challenges that young people have and uh, the responses there too.